Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to our Church 101 recap meeting. Um, I don't know how many of you, I, I know most of you here were um, students who were involved uh, and your parents, and uh, I'm thankful for you guys as you've uh, marched through something that's been a pretty significant change in the way that we've done Sunday mornings, at least for high school ministry. Um, and I just wanted to take this morning to um, hear from a couple of students uh, from kind of how their experience was. I had two people who were planning to speak this morning and they dropped out on me. So I randomly picked two more students who were even more eager and willing to come and share. So we will hear very briefly from them. Um, uh, and thankful for their willingness to share. Um, and then I just have a couple of reflections on the past, you know, 11 or 12 weeks of what we've done with Church 101 on big takeaways that I've had. Um, and then we have those little sheets and uh, some things that I'd love for you guys to think through and talk through as a family, uh, kind of as we move forward from here uh, on into the next weeks and months. So before we start, we'll pray uh, and then we'll talk. So God, thank you for uh, this opportunity to meet this morning. Uh, we do thank you for your church, the body of Christ, as we gather here at Parkside. Uh, we know that uh, apart from your help, apart from what your word prescribes for us and the wisdom that you give us from above, we really, we really wouldn't know how to do church, how to exist as a church, um, how to gather the right way. But we're so thankful, God, that you've given us instruction, that you do offer us wisdom, and that you do uh, guide us uh, towards um, in really clear ways what it means to exist as the body of Christ. We know that this class that we've uh, gone through together has just been a, a small expression, a, a small attempt to try and do that better as a church and getting the high schoolers integrated into the life of your church. And so, God, we pray that uh, even as we recap things today and think about what lies ahead, you would help us to think well, uh, to think wisely, um, and to have uh, the right priorities as families and as individuals as we understand what it means to be a part of your church. So help us in this. Help me as I lead us. Help these students as they share a little bit. Um, and we pray, God, that you would just bless this time that we have together this morning. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to give a brief overview of what these last couple of weeks have looked like, and then I'm going to invite our couple of students to come up and share a little bit about uh, what that was like for them, specifically probably that ministry exploration part of things. Uh, we went through, um, if you take the, the first intro week of kind of explaining what this class is, right after that we started with kind of working through what I, what I thought in our student ministry team and uh, really the leadership team here at the church thought were some of the most important things that we would want you to understand as students, as parents, as families about what the church is and why it's important. So we began with talking about how the gospel is at the center of all that we do, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. If you take that um, out of the equation of anything and everything that we do here at Parkside, really the whole thing comes tumbling down. And so we talked about why the gospel has to be at the heart of every sermon that's preached, at the bottom of why we would go and do any acts of service or any missions project or anything that we do here. Um, who Jesus is and what he's done for us is at the center of it all. So the Jesus and his gospel, what he's done for us is the center that holds everything together. And we talked about the church as the body. We talked about how the church, even though we might be tempted to treat it like it's an organization where people come and just kind of get this consumer product of what they prefer to hear and kind of get a sermon and get their relationships and then leave. But we talked about how the church, more than an organization, is more like an organism. It's this body with different parts where each of us as being a part of the body has a part to play. And in the part that we play, we can't do that well without the other parts of the body operating together. And we're all together the body of Christ. And we talked about what that picture means. We talked about corporate worship as the heartbeat of the church, kind of as the, the center of all that we do. We talked about the importance of the preaching of the word and the way that that guides us as a church in the right direction. 
Uh, we talked about why it would be important for us to gather together and maybe uh, be in a room with other people that we normally wouldn't live our lives with or people we normally wouldn't interact with. Um, because it's that picture of when in the very, at the, on into eternity where people from every tribe, tongue, and nation are worshiping Jesus together, we get to experience a small taste of that on Sunday mornings. So that's why uh, worship is the heartbeat of what we do here. We talked about serving as stewardship in week four. That we each, if we're believers, we've been given a gift. Gifts not to use for ourselves, but gifts to use for the good of others. And so we talked to the students about, okay, what are your gifts? We had um, one of those uh, not perfect, but I think helpful, like spiritual gift assessment tests. All the students did those just to start to gauge you know, what ways might God be gifting me, um, and how might I use those gifts to help serve the church, to be a good steward of those gifts for the good of others. We talked about the ordinances, uh, those, so we have baptism and the Lord's Supper. We talked about how those are pictures of grace, things that help us to remember uh, who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Um, these, these pictures of, in baptism, what has happened to us individually, uh, an outward expression of that, and then the Lord's Supper as a way to remember together as a church family who Jesus is and what he's done. And then lastly, we talked about how discipleship is our mission. Everything that we do centered on the gospel, our mission is to go and make disciples, to gather in people who are following Jesus as we ourselves are following Jesus. So that's our recap of what we taught through, the topics that we went through. Um, and then the thing that we did in the last four weeks before this one where we give students an opportunity to go and explore different ministries. There's a big emphasis of why we did this class is because we wanted students to not just gather here together with just high schoolers every Sunday, but to get involved using their gifts, interacting with other believers who typically you might not interact with in Sunday morning groups to give you a chance to explore those different ministries. So students went through uh, a bunch of different classes, uh, options of different classes to visit and ministries to serve in, and they visited children's ministry, nursery, uh, some of the students checked out the praise team rehearsals, uh, there's a long list of things uh, that were offered, and um, the last four weeks have been one of the things that I have been uh, most encouraged by, which would be a great segue for our surprise volunteers to come up uh, and just share a little bit about what uh, the last four weeks have been like. Give it up for our two volunteers. Can you just tell everybody your name, your grade, and what school you go to? Because those are just the three questions we ask in any interview with student ministry. Um, my name is Jeff Boydas. Um I'm in wait, grade in school. Grade in school, yeah. Um, I'm in 11th grade, and I go to Kenston High School. I'm Brian Fox. Uh, I'm in ninth grade, and I go to Shaker High School. Okay, Brian, you answer this question. What in during these four weeks of ministry? Uh, I know you didn't do all of them, but what what ministries did you check out or help in? And uh, what was your favorite part of participating in those ministries? Um, so I served in the nursery, the nursery ministry. And I think it was really like, rewarding to see all the parents, like, as they come in, like, they're very thankful for us for caring for their kids so that they can go to the service. And also like, the kids were pretty fun, too. I was with the two-and-a-half-year-olds, so like, they were just kind of learning how to talk and interact with each other. So it was fun to watch them. Excellent. Jack, same question for you. What did you, what ministries did you help out in? What was a highlight in that time that you spent in that ministry? Um, the first ministry I did, uh, I think I was in ushers, and um, my favorite part of it was just guiding people to their seats and talking with my um, lead usher, if you want to call it. Um, then I had the greeters, and um, I think the highlight again was just uh, getting to know my uh, lead greeter while doing the job of guiding people to their like different um, small groups and everything. Then, um, uh, then I did the child's nursery, but that was kind of weird because like 
that was um, they didn't really they didn't really have my name down, so like I just stood at the front desk uh, helping kids find their classes and checking them in and everything. So yeah. Perfect. Okay, that's good. Um, what was what was your favorite thing about any three of those things that you did? I think it would I think it would have been uh, being an usher just because um, I liked uh, um, the person I was ushering with. We had a lot in common, so we got to talk about um, a lot of things we both like. So that's good. Was there anything? unexpected, uh, surprising, difficult, or challenging about those four weeks? That question is for either of you. All right, um, for, like, again, for the ushering, um, there's a rule, like, you have to have two seats in between each person, so you had to kind of, like, eyeball the map and everything, so you wouldn't sit someone too close to someone else. I would not have been good at that. That's yeah. good. <laughs> Quick math. Okay. Um, wait, what was the question? Was there anything difficult, surprising, or challenging about any of the stuff that you did during those weeks of exploration? Um, I guess in, in Dan Larison's life group, I guess it was just surprising because all the adults were like coming up to me and asking me about school. So that was fun. It was fun. Like it wasn't it wasn't challenging, but um, it was. It was just surprising all the adults were like, I guess that's kind of what happens like whenever you're with a lot of adults, but they were like, you know, coming up to me and asking me, and it was just fun to get to know them, and like they were asking me about my, my school, and they were like, they were telling me about their lives and their families and stuff, so that was fun. Excellent. Well, thank you to both of you. I appreciate you being willing to share, and especially for yeah, taking the initiative and uh, getting involved. Both of you guys did a great job at that. So I think uh, in the students that I've talked to, I've heard uh, plenty of similar stories. Um, I wanted to just take a brief moment to, as I've heard uh, stories from uh, these guys and girls, talk to uh, a lot of you parents um, as you've had um, a whole lot of reflections and opinions and uh, all sorts of things that have truly been really helpful to me as I've um, trying to chart out a little bit of a different path for what high school looks like on Sunday mornings. Uh, I do want to tell you guys that um, I truly, really do appreciate those of you who have been willing to express like the things that you don't love about Church 101, the things that uh, you find challenging as a family. Like I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, really appreciate uh, that you guys were willing to come and talk to me. And maybe if you have thoughts or reflections and you haven't come to talk to me yet, um, I'm glad for those conversations. And they've been really valuable as we've spent the last six months thinking and praying and really laboring over, trying to think through for a pretty big ministry here in this church what the best uh, path forward is. So I'd encourage you, those lines of communication with me and with Casey and with Robbie and uh, all those people in involved with student ministry, even your kids, small group leaders, um, we're always willing to talk and we're doing, we want to do everything we can to have relationships with parents and whole families, not just your students. So I did want to say that I am really thankful for you guys and for your, your patience and your willingness to uh, be a part of something that's difficult and challenging in a lot of ways. I have three reflections that I'd like to share with you um, that I think are um, things that I'm thinking about as we move forward, and I hope that as families you can think about and kind of have in your mind as well. Before I give my three reflections, I just wanted to share one of the metaphors that we use for what Church 101 is and why we're doing it. As I talked about how at Thanksgiving, many of our families would, you grow up and you have like a kid's table and a grown-up table. So at the grown-up table, you've got like the turkey and the gravy and the mashed potatoes, the fancy silverware. It's kind of like the, the main event of Thanksgiving, right? And then you have the younger kids who are at the kid's table with chicken nuggets and mac and cheese and the paper plates and... Um, there is a time and a season where we would go, it's right for our kids to sit at the kids' table, that this is food that they will actually eat, and um, it's right for them to be together. 
but we don't have our 18-year-old sons or daughters at the kids' table. There's a point where you welcome them to come to the adult table, and you say, you're ready to be a part of this. You're ready to actually participate in the meal. And Church 101, for me and for my, my fellow leaders in this, I think we think that high school is a good time to move up, in the, in the church metaphor here, from moving to the kids' table to the adult table. Because as high schoolers, you really are at that pivotal point in transitioning from childhood into adulthood. Uh, and you guys know that as you are learning how to drive, you're getting ready to go to college. Some of you are literally turning 18 and you're legally adults while you're in high school. And what we've shared before is that we see in the American church, and I think I've seen it in our church, where there are a lot of students who leave high school, they leave youth group, and then they just never get involved and plugged into a local church. And they just kind of go through youth group and then just fall off the face of the earth. And I wonder sometimes if part of the reason why that happens is that many students come through the church experience through youth group and through their adolescence, and they never really experience what the church really is. So when they leave and try and go to college, they're looking for another youth group. They're looking for another children's ministry experience rather than like a robust picture of what it means to worship, to be in community with people, and to serve and use their gifts. So I look at this opportunity that we have here on Sunday mornings with Church 101 as an opportunity to give students an opportunity to start to experience that if they haven't yet. And I've been encouraged to see how many students already have been doing that even before this. But there are a ton of high school students here in this church who have never done anything but come to youth group and just be here on Sunday mornings in this room. And they don't hear the preaching of the word on Sundays. They don't stand next to an older lady and worship and sing songs of praise together. And I think that there is something invaluable and necessary about doing that as a high school student. And so that is why we are doing this class. It's something where I'm trying to be involved in taking students and helping them get from the kids table to the adult table of church life. And so as we've gone through this class, now I have three reflections on, uh, very short, uh, but things that I, I hope that you know how I feel about these things, and uh, I hope you feel the same as well. Number one is that students were well-received by the rest of the church. I like the comment about Dan Larison's class because that was an overwhelming uh, commentary that I got back, that in the Sunday morning groups, uh, in the classes, there were adults who were excited to see students in the class. There, now, I'm not saying that it was like the most like carefree, easy thing in the world. It was intimidating for students, and a lot of the adults are like, I don't hang out with high schoolers very often. But overall, there is an overwhelmingly positive response from what I've heard and from what I think many of the students came back with to say that it was cool to be with other adults and a mixed group in those Sunday morning group settings. And I'll tell you as well that when we got into the weeks of serving, to walk around the children's wing and to look in every single class and to see these students and so many more involved in every single one of those children's ministry classes, having fun with, with little kids and making them laugh and drawing pictures with them and being a part of the lesson. It was a really cool picture of what I wanted this class to turn into. And to actually see it happening uh, was a great encouragement. And I'll tell you that as I walked through the hallways on these, the last month, I got dozens of comments from people who were like, hey, I saw one of your high school students in my class today or serving with me in ushering and greeting. And there was this uh, real refreshing welcome response from people. And I think even if you guys saw it as you walked through the hallways, it was cool to see one of our ushers in one of their nice suits and then like some high school freshman in a hoodie and jeans. And there's something that I think was just cool about that to see that at the front doors. So I know it wasn't, everything wasn't perfect, and, but there was a really, really positive response that I've had from a lot of parents, and not even parents, and, but people just in the church who saw it happening. And so I think you should know that. Um, and that was uh, what many of the other pastors said as well. Number two, so that's a little more positive. This one's a little more on the, the negative in a good way, that I recognize that this was challenging for many of you as students and many parents. I have had plenty of conversations with 
um, like I said, a lot of the opinions and the perspectives and the very legitimate um, concerns that parents had about um, what taking away a Sunday morning gathering and replacing it with this uh, might entail. I know that um, it is, this makes Sunday mornings your kind of normal pattern more challenging. Um, I know there were several students and parents who expressed uh, that even the thought of their student going into an, a, a Sunday morning group where they're a majority group of adults, that that was too scary and too intimidating and was really challenging. And I understand that. Um, we can go through the whole list of everything uh, that was shared, but I would like to just share the perspective that I've had that um, some of the things that are most challenging and difficult in our lives are often the things that are actually best for us. So I'm not saying that every challenge and difficulty that arose over the last 12 weeks have been good and perfect things, but I think any of you that would play sports would know that something like, like two-a-day football practices, you would go, this is not fun, this is difficult, this is challenging. But you understand that it's a challenge that is going to move you towards being a better football player, move you towards being a better team, and you see that there's actually, in life in general, we do difficult things when we understand that there's something valuable on the other side of it. That is really, I think, going to be necessary for families at Parkside as we consider Church 101 and why it exists and why we're doing it. I know that it's more challenging than having a class in here that just meets together with high schoolers every week. I know that it is going to, that most high school students would prefer to be in here with their friends and to spend that time together. And there's something good about that, and that's why we're going to continue doing what we're doing on Thursday nights. But I think that there's something, a, a real opportunity here to do something that is difficult and is challenging and will push students outside of their comfort zone and push you as a family outside of the comfortable patterns that maybe you've settled into. But I really do think as we've talked through the whole vision of this thing that it's pushing us towards something that is good and actually something that is better for us as families and as individuals. And I will say that even as we think about these last four strategic years that I, I, I've done this for eight years now, I've been the high school pastor, and I just, I see how formational these last four years of being a teenager are before you go off to college. And I ask the question, like, what, what is the best use of my time as a pastor? What is the best use of this ministry strategically in the lives of our students? And I'm becoming increasingly convinced that we need to do everything that we can to push our students and our families toward what we really think is best. And sometimes that doesn't always mean doing the things that we want or the things that we prefer. And so I, I really hope that you as a family, I'm not, I'm not asking for you to agree with you know, every single decision that we make as a ministry, but I want you at least, at the very least, to see my heart behind why we're doing this and to look in the direction that I'm really trying to push our ministry. And then ask yourself as a family to say, are the, the patterns of our life and the priorities that we take as a family, what direction are those things pointing me towards? And that kind of segues us into our third point is this, is that this is it going to be a long-term investment. Um, this is going to be, in, in many ways, this is, I think it's going to be a, a bit of a cultural shift for us where I think we, in many ways, we've developed in high school ministry this, this pattern of the way that we do things and what students and families are used to. And that's changing. And change is hard. And change takes a long time, especially when it's in a big group like we have here with our, our student ministry. Um, but a friend sent me this, uh, in the middle of all this, sent me an article that had a metaphor in it that I th think has been actually really helpful for me as I've thought about this. Um, I'm sure many of you, one of your chores or duties around the house is to mow the lawn. If you're like me, um, oftentimes I would like mow half of the lawn and see that all of my lines were like very crooked and wavy and that they weren't very straight the way that I want them to look. And one of the reasons for that is when you're mowing, you have this tendency to kind of lose focus, you're listening to a podcast or something, and you're just kind of staring down and, and you miss, you kind of 
just drift off to one direction or the other. But in this picture, it was saying one of the, one of the ways to prevent from mowing these crooked lines is to look and focus at a point that's out in front of you and keep your eyes fixed on that. And as you're pushing the mower, just aim towards that and you'll find that it'll make a straight line in that direction. As we approach Church 101 and what this program is really about and what it's aimed at, I think we can get a little stressed out or worried or uncomfortable if we've got our heads down at the immediate difficulties or challenges that are represented in doing things this way. But what I want to encourage you to do is to think about the long term, what this might mean for your family and your students, what this might mean for our church. As I look at it and I consider uh, what this means, I'm aimed at preparing these students in our ministry on Thursdays and Sundays, preparing them for college. I'm not just thinking about the right now. I'm thinking about what lies beyond this. I'm thinking about, at Parkside, our next group of pastors and elders, there's a good chance that a chunk of them are going to come from this youth ministry. They're going to come from our children's ministry. And we have this pivotal opportunity here at this church to make the future investment in what those students and children are going to value and care about in the future. And you as parents have this pivotal opportunity in the way that you order your schedule, in the way that you guide your family's time, you shape what they're going to value in the future. And I understand that that's the opportunity that I have, have here now. This change is aimed at um, a culture at Parkside where I see out in the future that it won't just be like a random bonus feature of being a high schooler that you would serve in a ministry or use your gifts, but it would actually just be an expectation that you come to Parkside, you're a high schooler, and you're involved and that you know people, and you're in relationships with people other than high schoolers. That's what I have out in front of me, and that's the thing that I'm trying to keep my eyes fixed on. And I think that Church 101 is something that's going to get us aimed in that direction. Um, and it's not going to be perfect, and we are going to have crooked lines every once in a while, but I think we have an opportunity um, as we order our patterns of life and consider our priorities. Um, to think about the long term. And that's our segue into our very last thing um, that I want us to consider um, in the what now section. I have two things. I have one thing for you as an individual and for your family is that little white card that's on your table that Casey so wonderfully uh, made for us. And then there's a blue card that would be for you to fill out and give to me if you would like. And so the blue card, I'll start with that. As you've had the opportunity to check out different ministries in the church, my hope was that that wouldn't have been just a flash in the pan, but that would have been something uh, that you would go, it was really fun hanging out with kids and teaching them about Jesus and just coloring with them. And I think I've got this gift or the resource of my time and the availability to make this a regular pattern of my life. And that could go for any single one of the things that you did. If that's the case, I want to help you get involved. I want to kind of grab you by the hand and get you connected with Kelly Coy or uh, with a Sunday morning group or whatever it might be. And so um, I want you to fill out that card if there's something that you are interested in. I'd love for you to talk about it now with your family uh, seated here or take it home and think and pray about it some more. Um, and then eventually um, email me a picture of that card or hand it to me in person on Thursdays. Um, and then the second thing, and really the most important one, We've talked about kind of the three boxes that I want families to check, uh, not just for students, but your whole family. The three things that I think really round out being a, a healthy member of any given church is that you are regularly involved in worship, in the gathered worship, that you are regularly involved in relationships with other people, and that you are regularly serving and using your gifts. I think we have a tendency to maybe emphasize one of those things, often at the expense of the other or often neglecting the other. But I really think it's right for all of us to look at those three, those three spheres of church life and see that we have a rounded out expression of church life here at Parkside by being able to check all three of those boxes. And so I want you to just as a family go through the simple exercise of looking at those three, uh, those three boxes and answering those questions. Am I regularly involved in worship? And what, if not, what should that look like? Am, is there a place in this church where I'm regularly connected with people? 
Because it's hard to do that with 2,000 people in that auditorium. If you're not in some place of connectedness, whether it's on Thursdays, whether it's in a, a midweek life group, whatever it might be, somewhere where people know what's going on in your life. They can be praying for you. They know who you are. And then a place where you're serving and using your gifts. So those are the two things that I'd love for you to fill out. One for you as a family to just consider um, what you want to do um, moving forward. And then the blue card that you can hand to us so we can help you get connected to serving and being involved. So in the what now, I want to tell you what is uh, our plan for the calendar moving forward. Church 101 will run again starting in September. The plan for this is that we would run this class once a semester. So it'll be something like 12 to 14 weeks depending on holidays and stuff. Every semester we will do the same thing that we did this semester. The idea being that if you've done this class, you're always welcome to come back and do it again, but we want students to go through this class and eventually get to the point where they say, on Sunday mornings here, I am involved, not just with a high school thing every Sunday, but involved elsewhere in the church, plugged into a Sunday morning group, serving, checking those three boxes. And now we obviously, I, as a student pastor here, I value the affinity gathering of all just high schoolers together. We're going to continue on having Thursday nights for SI, both on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we're also back at the warehouse on April 15th while I'm mentioning this. Um, Thursdays will be that night that is dedicated to the high school gathering and high school students spending time together in the large group and then in those small groups. Uh, but the plan from here on out is that Sunday mornings here at Parkside will either be for high schoolers, Church 101, this class that teaches you about the church and gets you involved, or beyond that, you taking the initiative to do what that class is trying to get you to do. So, thank you for listening to me ramble for the last six months or whatever this has been. Um, I appreciate your patience. I'm always open to... Um, constructive criticisms and comments and uh, any conversations that you'd like to have with me. Um, and it really is valuable as we figure out um, how to lead student ministry well. Really, the parents and families are the biggest part of that. So I'm going to pray. I encourage you to fill out those sheets. I will be here for the rest of our time if you'd like to come talk to me. And uh, thank you for your time. God, thank you for uh, this opportunity to uh, consider these things together this morning. I pray, God, that in uh, all these decisions we're trying to make concerning student ministry, that you would um, just be in all of it, that you would give us that wisdom that overrules the mistakes and the failures that we make, and um, when things go well, that you would uh, overrule um, our pride that wants to take credit for things on our own. Uh, God, just above all else, help us to keep our eyes fixed on your son Jesus, who he is and what he's done for us. Help that conviction that the gospel is at the center of all that we do. Uh, not just be something that we say, but it's actually something that we live, uh, that consumes our hearts, that drives our affections, that um, determines the way that we order every part of our lives. I pray that uh, the gospel and that reality of the life, death, resurrection of Jesus would um, really be at the center of how all of these families and these parents and these students uh, consider how they can be involved in the life of the church. Um, and in all the questions that we have and all the ways that we fail and all of our weaknesses, God, uh, I just pray that you would help us. So thank you for this time that we had together um, and bless the coming weeks and months uh, that we have. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.